it's Thursday. Today we're going to be solving more mystery patterns. You guys seem to really like this format last time, but just in case you missed it, basically I have a couple of patterns and then I get someone to strip all of the identifying information from it until it's just the row instructions. And then I try and guess from just that what it's supposed to be. And then we make it and see how close I got. So today's patterns have been very kindly provided by Lee from Skein Spider. So Skein Spider is also a YouTube crochet channel and her channel is packed full of really awesome patterns. So if you haven't encountered her on your travels on YouTube before, I want you to go to the description down below. Once you finish watching this, of course, and click the link and check her out. Now, I believe she's also trying this challenge with some of my patterns. So after this, you should go see how she went and tell her complicated knot says hi. All right, let's get started. Okay, so it looks like she's prepared three patterns for me and I'm gonna try and get through all three today. So I've just pulled the first pattern up and I'm gonna have a quick read through tools and materials. Okay, so to start with, uh, it looks like I only need one color of yarn. And we're going to go with pale yellow for our yarn. It's difficult to pick colors when you don't know what you're doing. And one pair of safety eyes. So I've grabbed a pair of little green ones and that's what we're going to operate with. So now the fun starts. So it looks like this pattern is made up of four parts and we make one part one. We make two of the parts once and two of the parts at least twice. So one part's marked anywhere from two to four. So that's fun. Yeah, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the camera angle so you can see my page and I'm going to try and sketch up what I think these shapes are and then we'll come back and try and work out what it is together. So, as it was a flat piece, I took the number of rows and the number of stitches and sketched it out using a little graph to reveal... I don't know what that is. Okay, it's some sort of triangular piece. I immediately related to the first design. This potato? I sketched up the next piece pretty easily, but then came the final piece. So this last bit's kind of interesting. It's got these like chain four turns at the end of each row, which I'm gonna guess is going to give us like a, a curved frill or something similar to it. Oh, but then it is growing a lot bigger than I thought it was as well. This is, this is interesting, I like this. <laughs> So these are our pieces and I'm just drawing them back again to scale so that I'm not throwing things off too wildly. Okay, disclaimer, I don't think everything's a fish. Basically, I sketched up a fish, half a fish. I drew a fish. Walking in as a fish. But I think this might be a fish, <laughs> right? I mean, it has to be. We don't have anything that could form like feet or, or limbs and it has eyes so we know it's a creature. So it like, the body potato has to be a literal body potato. Those two have to be, like they could maybe form like the butterfly tail, right? And then like little little fins at the bottom and then we've put little eyes in. I'm doing it. I have to, I have to lock it in as a fish and I feel really silly about doing that because, I mean, last time it was a woodland creature. So using the shapes we had, I drew a little goldfish and locked it in. So I'm locking in my guess. Um, I promise to guess something other than fish for the next one. Right, so now we're just gonna make those pieces and see if it looks like something else, I guess, is what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that now. <laughs> so that's part A, and I will not be convinced that that is not a fin. Even with that, I mean, just look at that. Beautiful little back loop only detail on there. It's a fish, it has to be. <laughs> now I'm working from a pattern with no photos. So the fun part in positioning the eyes is always working out which way is up. Let's see if I can get you those good pop sounds, ready? good stuff. That was great. So we worked it out. So now I'm just gonna like finish the last couple of rows. Okay, so I'm just working on the final part of this particular thing now. This is a cute little potato. Sweet. Uh, and I've reached the piece that has those chain of four and then turn your work pieces at it. And I'm an idiot. 
Those chain fours are clearly designed to extend the rows, not create a little curl over at the end of each row. And I'm no, it's not. It's just not my brightest moment. So I wanted to come here and make fun of myself a little bit so that you guys could too. Yeah. Okay. Back to the piece. I finished making the pieces. I actually was finding it really interesting to try out different techniques to the ones that I normally use. Well, that worked up kind of like witchcraft, didn't it? <laughs> Look at that. It's like, how, how did you do that? I just, I, just, I mean, I just did it, but like, what? <laughs> now, I just want to say, I think that I got my sketches pretty close to what they actually are. So that's part A. I'll note that that is the exact shape that I drew, maybe a little bit narrower. My little potato here. I think I've ended up putting the eyes in a different spot, but it's pretty close. Part C fits exactly. I drew that one to scale by accident. And part D I was a little off with just because I'm not convinced that this piece wasn't witchcraft. There's one line of instructions that I am struggling a little bit to interpret, but I'm just gonna, it's, it's a note for after assembly. So maybe it'll all make sense once it's put together. So, uh, th this is it. I have no, I have no, no further instructions and it's just time to assemble. Which way do fish fins go? Do they go small to tall or tall to small? I like him up this way. Punk rock fish. Look at this. I'm not sure I've done the tail correctly. I might uh, play around a little bit there. I might have attached it backwards, but um, she's so pretty. <laughs> she's so pretty. <laughs> All right, sewing. So I used a little artistic license for the tail. I've decided to ruche them. I think that that uh, looks fishier to me. It's kind of a mustache. It's actually a really excellent mustache. I'm probably doing this tail wrong. Hopefully it's right enough. So there she is. She is such a pretty little princess. And my puffer fish is a little bit enamored with her. I do wish I'd chosen a different color, <laughs> but uh, not because I don't think this is a great fish color, but just I would have loved if she'd contrasted with him a little bit, given that they're now going to be together forever, you know. I never worked out what that final assembly note meant. Basically, it was like crochet in a circle for six crochet. So maybe it's about creating like a gill. That's what I'm going to do. But I want to make sure that I have followed all of the instructions, even if I followed some of them wrong. So my hook, and then it's just meant to be along the under chin, I believe. So we'll just yeah, that, that's that's approximately what we're wanting to do, I think. And there is our first pattern. So let's see how close we got. Honestly, I think I got pretty close. So it looks like that instruction that I couldn't quite interpret was meant to create lips on the little fish. And that makes so much sense. And it's kind of hard from the photo to see, to get a good look at the tail, but I think mine's close enough to pass. I think I get a passing grade on this one for sure. Honestly, I think my fish would fit right in with that gang. It even fits the color story. Okay, so she was pattern one. She's going to join my future aquarium because one day I will make my aquarium. So now we're going to move on to pattern two. So looking at pattern B, it looks like we needed two colors, a light color and a dark color. And I've decided to go with pink this time. We need 16 millimeter safety eyes. I think these are technically 15 mil, but honestly, when it comes to safety eyes, one or two mil makes no difference. So it looks like this pattern's made up of three pieces. They're a little bit bigger than last time, which is good. We had our warm up, and now we're moving on to like the main course. I have a feeling that I know what this is. The second piece was already an interesting shape, but it also included a puff stitch detail in our alternate color that I was assuming were feet. I sketched up the third piece one row at a time and it seemed to not be a small piece. Oh, it's a big piece, massive piece. But its size made it easily identified. Oh no, it's a head, it's a head. 
Okay, well, this time I drew everything to scale, so putting it together should be a little bit easier. <laughs> Looking at the pieces we had available, I felt there was only one thing it could really be. Cutie pie little caterpillar. What do you guys think? I feel like it's the only thing that could possibly require these four pieces. So there is my guess. I'm pretty confident in this one. Let's just stitch it up real quick. So I stitched up all the pieces. I kind of fell into a crochet coma on this one, and when I woke up, I had just snapped the eyes on. Probably should have taken slightly longer to make sure that I had centered them properly. I kind of just winged it then. Oops, I hope that'll work. So now I'm just going to stuff it, and then we will review the pieces we have. But, once again, I am fairly confident that what we have here is a caterpillar. Now you can't tell me I didn't nail it this time, because here is piece A, exactly as drawn. Here is piece B, exactly as drawn. And the head, once again, exactly is drawn. I am so good at this. So now it's time to assemble this in the only way that makes really any sense, which would be to like, oh my God, I love him. Are you kidding me right now? Ooh. And then like these would go on the head, I assume. Okay, so I am just gonna sew him together. So there is pattern number two and I think there is no way it could be anything but a caterpillar, right? All right, further proof that I'm a psychic. Look at the official photo for this pattern. Are you kidding me? I got the colors right, guys. How is that even possible? So I've absolutely nailed this one too. So we've done goldfish and we've done caterpillar. And there is one more to go. Now I have been warned that this one here is longer than the other two and might take a little longer and be a little more complicated and I've been trying really hard not to read it. I had to stop and charge my phone in the middle of filming this. So I've been trying really hard not to read it, but look what this little guy can do. <laughs> now I have to say that it doesn't really matter what the next one is. I'm going to be doing it in a blue and green color profile so it looks nice with the other two. So here's hoping that ends up being appropriate. See how many times today I can cut at least 25% of my head out of frame. Okay. Oh, this is already ominous. <laughs> so it involves four colors and Lee has very kindly told me that they are white, black, and then a lighter version of a color and a darker version of a color. So great. It also mentions that safety eyes are optional sizes to preference and I may or may not need a pipe cleaner. <laughs> so I started drawing my way through the pieces. It turns out that one piece was just adding a black outline to piece three, but it was piece four when I realized something fishy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing a lot of things that look like flippers again. I moved on. Okay, yeah, this looks like the big mama piece. Here we go. Oh, all the way down. Okay, so it looks like we make kind of a long teardrop type shape. I think my coloring skills have come a long way. So the camera, I should take the time to do it nicely, but no. F is the final piece. Okay, cool. So here are our pieces. Uh, look, it looks like a fish to me. Then we've got a teardrop. We've got some fins. We've got some interesting color markings. Like what would they represent? It's, it's the optional safety eyes and the pipe cleaner is throwing me completely. Um, I was trying really hard to make it anything but a fish. So, so the eyes go like here. This makes no sense. This makes no sense. Could it be a penguin of some kind being that shape? It'd be a weird shaped penguin. All penguins are beautiful. Doesn't really make sense proportionally, but who cares? 
and oh have i seen white get used anywhere oh white all of the entirety of piece a is white that makes sense ah if piece a is white though it means it's definitely not a beak so maybe it's not a penguin Something about this doesn't feel right to me. I think it'd be funny if I tried to like proceed with it and make it a penguin, but I just I don't think it is a penguin. Let's do it. Let's let's make it a fish. Maybe it's a whale. <laughs> so it could be this could be part B. I'm not on camera. Drew that not on camera. That's my bad, guys. There we go. And this great big chunk of nugget. It's my safety eye. Doing what safety eyes do. Safely. And then this bit could be like a, an underbelly strip, which is definitely saying whale to me. I don't know what that, that spot does though. Maybe I'm just not familiar with my types of whale. I'm still going to just plonk that in the middle of its forehead. Okay. So I need to correct myself then because whales aren't fish. Whales are mammals. So I'm going to go ahead and decide that this is some kind of whale. Okay, so, here we go, let me take you for a tour. We started with this little penguin dude, but I think that we'll find whale is our answer. So, wait, where's my camera? Oh, I'm down there now. Huh. Whoop. So, sorry, you can probably tell that it's gotten a bit dark here now. Uh, I will be stitching up these pieces. But I think whale, I think whale is the answer. Feeling very Aquaman, solving all of our problems with fish. So, picked my yarn out. I've got some white and some blue behind me somewhere for when that comes up, because it's not, not a large amount that's needed of either. So I'm just gonna stitch all of our pieces together now. I am one row into making part A, having locked in my guess, and I know what this is. Is it a whale? Nah. Those who know, know. Those who get it, get it. We'll catch the rest of you up later. All right, so that is piece one complete. So I'm gonna give you another hint. That's how confident I am that I've guessed this correctly. So they swim in the ocean. Okay, so that's part two, and the clue is they can beat a polar bear in a fight. That's that bit done, and they are the Jedi of the sea. Let me know when you get it. <laughs> Inventor of the shish kebab. Working up the final piece of this pattern was so interesting. So skein spider has used a combination of slip stitches and half double crochet to form the same curve of the body that I would have used front post single crochet for. And it was a technique that I just hadn't encountered before, which was really cool. They're like an underwater unicorn. Now what? Clearly a narwhal, not a penguin. I tried, I tried to turn it into a penguin anyway, but it's just clearly a narwhal. It's a narwhal. But uh, I'm just gonna sew his pieces on and then we'll do our reveal. Okay, so I've sewn a lot of these pieces on at this point, but I've found myself with a bit of an interesting problem. And that is, which way up does a narwhal go? <laughs> because like, this is how I, I had like, drawn it and thought about it and you know poking implement directly in front of the face we've got the belly underneath that seems right to me right but then while sewing it on i flipped it over i just moved the horn up a little bit is it just me or does that also look like a narwhal so now i don't know where which way up he's supposed to go uh Knowing it's probably wrong and not what it's supposed to look like, I'm thinking I'm going to make him up this way. Having a handful of narwhal just really appeals to me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I've decided to, to flip my narwhal and I'm going to make him up this way. 
And there is my finished narwhal, who is probably upside down. Now, I've already achieved a passing grade. Two out of three ain't bad. But let's see how close I got my narwhal. My narwhal is, in fact, upside down. But I think that's fine. I think that together they'd make a wonderful little yin and yang pairing. So I'm going to give myself a half mark for that one there. I correctly identified the creature. I just inverted it somewhat. Okay, so those are the three mystery patterns we did today. I've linked all three in the description down below in case any of you want to make one for yourself. My favorite by far has to be the little fish. I just, she's so pretty. Like, I, I, I don't think even cameras do her justice just with like, she's so pretty. I, I love her. Uh, I want to make like 15 more of them and just hang them from my ceiling. So one thing I did realize working on the mystery patterns this time versus last time is how much of a difference it makes to work on patterns that were clearly all written by the same person meant that in between doing the different designs, I didn't have to like stop and play a game of cracking the cryptic. And it really helped that they just happened to be well written or at least written in a way that I understood very easily. So that helped, but I think it did also take some of the mystery out because I read them and then like they, t they turned into the things I was trying to make. <laughs> You can let me know that you enjoy this format by hitting the like button or letting me know down in the comments. And next week I'm going to be revisiting a challenge that I attempted almost a year ago today. So I hope to see you there. Okay, bye!